Neil deGrasse Tyson says the light of Muslim science faded. When Imam al-Ghazali declared that reason had limits, that fire does not burn, but God makes it burn. To him, that was the moment when Muslims stopped asking how and started saying, because God willed it. The age of questioning ended, and the golden age collapsed. Islam, in what's the golden period of Islam? In that period, algebra was invented. Algorithm is an Arabic word. All these words, they begin with A-L. 10 to 1, it's an Arabic word. Arabic, our numerals are Arabic numerals. Did you pause and reflect on why we call them Arabic numerals? We just call them that, right? But somebody did good stuff with these numerals. It was in Baghdad a thousand years ago where they invented algebra. And there was advances in mathematics, agriculture, engineering, med, all of these fields. All at a time when Europe was disemboweling heretics. So something changed. 12th century, this gentleman came around. Al-Ghazali, a Muslim scholar, learned. At this point, Islam is maybe just a few hundred years old. People are reading the Quran and interpreting it however they sort of want to and feel like it. There's not a coherence to the practice of Islam until he comes around and codifies the behavior of a good Muslim. In much the same way St. Augustine, in his book, Cities of God, codified what it is to be a good Christian. How do you burn the witches? There's a recipe for that. You gotta, they got to be upside down so the blood does, you know. It's a whole, whole itinerary for how to be a good Muslim. And in, in his writings contain the assertion that the manipulation of numbers is the work of the devil. Two, actions that you see in nature are the will of Allah. Well, if you drop a stone and it falls, not Allah willed that. If that's your explanation, your curiosity stops. You combine everything happening in nature being the will of Allah to the manipulation of numbers being the work of the devil, and the entire enterprise of that golden era collapses. Now, historians, when they look at that era, they say, well, the Mongols came and they... You know, so historians think of the world in terms of wars and kings. They think less about it philosophically, about intellectual movements or the absence thereof. Islam rose again after this period, didn't have science associated with it. No new inventions in math. You look at the period of Islam in Spain, the period where the great Al Alhambra was built, there is no attendant science going on there. It's done. It's gone. And it is a, it is a cost that exists to this day. There is 1.3 billion Muslims in the world today who are not participants on the frontier of scientific discovery. But Alama Iqbal saw this story very differently. He said it wasn't Ghazali who killed reason. It was the misunderstanding of Ghazali that made reason sleep. Ghazali never rejected thinking. He only reminded us that intellect alone cannot reach the whole truth. Reason and revelation must walk together. According to Alama Iqbal, when Greek philosophy entered the Muslim world, it brought both a gift and a danger. It sharpened the intellect, but it weakened the spirit. Great thinkers like Ibn Sina and Al-Farabi tried to bring philosophy and faith together, but slowly, many Muslims began to see God as a distant being, not as the living, near, and active Lord that Islam truly teaches. Then came Imam al-Ghazali. He saw that reason was trying to replace revelation. He said, Yes, reason is a light, but it has limits. Beyond those limits lies a world that only a pure and sincere heart can truly see. Through his writings, Ghazali reminded the Muslim world that real truth comes not from reason alone, but from reason joined with faith and divine experience. However, after him, Muslims misunderstood his message. Instead of purifying reason, they abandoned it. They stopped questioning, stopped researching, stopped reflecting, and the creative light of Islam slowly faded. It was this period that Alama Iqbal called the time when thought went to sleep, a time when the once-living spirit of inquiry 
the spirit that once turned deserts into centers of knowledge, became silent. The mind that once reached the stars turned inward and quiet. Iqbal said this sleep was not death, but a pause, a deep slumber of the Muslim intellect waiting to be awakened again by the divine call of the Qur'an. Do they not reflect? Do they not use their reason? The Qur'an never asks for blind faith. It calls us to see, think, and reflect, to explore both the outer universe and the universe within ourselves. As Allah says, we will show them our signs in the horizons and within themselves until it becomes clear to them that this is the truth. Surah Fusilat 4153